Today we're going to talk about something new and different. Now I've done a couple of tutorials on Clipper and as you've seen with Raspberry Pi or OctoPi, it's taken quite a bit of time. One of the people on Discord has pointed out that there is a simpler way to do this, so I want to show you that method. So today what we're going to have to do is actually still update Clipper so that we can do the firmware, but I'll show you a simpler method to do this faster. So I'm going to take the drive as before, pop it into the reader, and this version of Linux is still the same, but the interface will be slightly different. So I'll show you that. It's gonna be with Fluid Pi. So I'm gonna plug this in, you may hear a beep, now I'm going to actually go over to the desktop and on the desktop we have Fluid. So in Fluid, all we have to do is click on install. Then we're going to go to Fluid Pi. Then we're going to go to download Fluid Pi. And we're going to click on this zip file for Windows. This may take a few moments to actually download. In the interim, I've already downloaded it and extracted the zip. So I'm going to take you over to Raspberry Pi Imager. I'm going to choose the actual OS by using Use Custom, then Fluid Pi, then I'm going to say Open, then I'm going to choose Storage. I'm going to choose the same 16 gigabits that I used in the previous tutorial for the SD card, and then I'm going to write and then I'm gonna say yes. Now this part may take up to five minutes to complete, so I will edit this out of the video for the length of it taking to image, so that the video will be shorter. Okay, now that it's finished verifying for FluidPi, we're gonna click continue. We're gonna go over to the workbench for a moment. I'm gonna pop out the drive, pop it back in, then I'm going to go back over to the desktop. I'm going to open up the actual file for it. In this case, it's going to be in my E drive for the SD card. And I'm going to look for Fluid Pi WPA Supplicant. I'm going to right click and open with Notepad. It's very important to use Notepad in this case because Windows Notepad will fail. So use Notepad++ as you can see I'm using here. So the first thing we got to do is find our network connection. So we're going to have to remove the actual comments right here by backspacing them out. And this will enable the functionality for WPA or WPA2. Then we're going to put the name of our router in here and then we'll put the password to actually connect to it. Now I've already done this off camera so I'm not going to show you my router name or password but I will copy it from my downloads folder over. So let me make a quick copy here and paste it in. Okay so now that that's complete I'm going to close out of here for a moment. I'll also close this down and what we'll do is we'll remove the drive, we'll go back over to the computer workbench, we'll take the drive and place it in here, and then I'm gonna have to grab the power for it real quick here. And the power comes with the Canva kit, so it should be the correct power. So I'm gonna plug this in it's already powered up. There's a switch to actually do it, but I left it on. So that's going to take a moment to actually power up. So we're going to go back over to the desktop and I'm going to show you something about how to find your IP address. Now this may not work every time, but it's a good method. So you're going to type ARP for ARP minus A with the space in between, obviously. And then you're gonna press enter. Now, what you can see right here is 
168.1.1. That's the router on the network in my case. Most of the time routers will end in dot one. The next address is the computer I'm actually recording from. And then the Raspberry Pi has not shown up yet. Now, if I do a second ARP in a few minutes and it does not show up, then you're going to have to log into your router by using the address 192.168.1.1 up above if that is your router address and then find connected devices. So let's try a second ARP by up arrowing and it's pretty close to the time that we would see it. So let's see if this has changed. So we do see a new device being 192.168.1.5. So we're gonna take that over to our web browser and see what's going on. So inside the browser, we're gonna type 192.168.1.5 and press enter. And as you can see, it's come up with fluid. So the first thing that you want to do in this environment is get familiar with where everything is. So we're going to go to settings and I'm going to show you this for the moment. I may not do the update. We'll see how this goes, but they have an automatic check for updates. And then there's three things that need to be updated. So for instance, if you do Clipper, it'll automatically go out and find the latest updates and update it for you. Then you could also do the update for Moonraker. And this one's pretty quick as well. Now the last one being the OS packages may take a great deal of time. So we're gonna see how the tutorial goes, but you technically should do an update on that as well. So in order to actually set up the actual configuration for Clipper, it's a little bit simpler if we go over to, let's see what we got here. We actually can't move until this finishes. So we're gonna give it a second to actually catch up. And this should be somewhat quick, or at least that was the plan. But as soon as this finishes up, we can actually log in and do some other stuff. Right now it's updating some stuff in Python where you can see pip. So what we'll do while waiting for this to complete, whoop, there we go, it just finished, is we'll go over to, let's see, the general, and then we'll look around and see what the environment looks like. Now obviously we still have to do Clipper. So we also have jobs, then we have history, tuning, then configuration. So configuration, it's gonna be kind of simple. You're gonna to have to copy over your actual file that you're gonna be using for your printer config. So to do that, you would normally type SKR to find it, and then click this little uh, clock symbol here. Hopefully it'll find it. Apparently it's having issues finding SKR. So the reason is because I'm not on example configs. So I'll type SKR, then I'll do this again. And we have it as the first option. Now there's a couple of ways you can do this. My trick is if you wanna do it really quick, you do download, then you say keep, then you'll open the folder it's in, take the folder and then drag it up into here because you can't drag it straight across. Now you're gonna have to rename it. So you'll right click, you'll say rename, and it should be printer.config. And then you'll save that. So now you have the configuration where you can edit it. And as you can see, it's set up for one particular configuration that you start with. It tells you about what you need to configure for your bootloader. Now there may be some issues with the bootloader. We'll find out in a second because I didn't do the last update. But what we can see right here is our first stepper, our second stepper, our third stepper being the Z axis. But inside here they combine the actual end stop. So you have it right here. 
And that little carrot symbol that you see right there is actually a resistor sense. So it's the pull up for the resistor or pull down. Uh, if you want to negate the value or change it, in this case I do because I know it's going to be an issue, I'm going to put an exclamation point in front of it instead. That'll take a true to a false or a false to a true, or in this case triggered to open or open to trigger. So I know that this will be an issue at least in this case. Now inside this configuration file, there's a bunch of settings to say where your actual pins are. For instance, your heat bed. This will be actually in the Big Tree Tech uh, manual for your printer. In this case, it's the SKR2. And if you open this up, you can click on hardware and then you can go to your pinouts. And inside your pinouts, you'll see for your thermal bed, it's PA1, which does match what we're seeing right here. So there are other configurations that you can set. Here's something I believe for your display. Now displays are somewhat limited in what you can use at the moment. So you can only use like the older type displays to display. Now down here, they also have examples for the TMC 2209 that you can paste up here and remove the comments but for now this is just showing you how to do a setup for your tutorial and not a configuration so I do have a discord where a bunch of people have experience in this and we'll go into that later so I'm gonna click Save I'm gonna click X and now what we need to do is actually configure Clipper so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually open up what's known as TerraTerm. So I'll type TerraTerm. Then what I'll do is I'll bring it over so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to click File, New Connection. It's going to be 192.168.1.5. The port's going to be 22 and it's SSH. Now SSH is not Telnet. It's a ciphered communication. So we're going to click OK. Then we're going to go continue. The password is going to be the default for Raspberry Pi. So the username is Pi. And the password is going to be Raspberry. And then we click OK. So this may take a second to actually connect to the device. Now I got the password wrong, so I'll type it again. R-A-S-P-B-E-R-R-Y enter and now we're connected so now it's pretty similar to the previous configuration that we did for clipper in the tutorial that I'll display in the upper right hand corner and that is we're gonna type CD which is change directory space we'll do the little squiggly line that's up above your tab button with the shift then we'll do forward slash Clipper. So we're changing a directory to the Clipper directory. So once that's complete, we're going to type make config and then press enter. I'm sorry, make config menu. Or it's menu config, pardon me. Then we're going to hit spacebar. Then we're going to down arrow once, right arrow, pick the processor, which is STM32, and hit spacebar. Then we're going to download, or excuse me, down arrow, and do the right arrow, pick our actual chipset, which is STM32F407, then press spacebar. Then we already have the kilobits already set for the bootloader. We have the actual timing for the crystal. So we're going to hit Q. Then we're going to say yes. Now we can make it by typing make and then enter. And this is a series of compiles that build the Clipper firmware. So the Clipper firmware is going to be called clipper.bin. So if we're successful, we should see that at the end. 
So it looks like we're successful. So in order to grab this now, we need to go over to FileZilla and we have to type in 192.168.1.5. Username is going to be pi. Password is going to be raspberry. And the port's going to be 22. Then we'll click Quick Connect. We'll say OK. Then we have to go to the Clipper folder, then the Out folder, and then inside here you can see the actual clipper.bin. So we'll copy that to our Downloads folder. Then we'll minimize this for a moment. And we'll go over to our Downloads folder over here. And as you can see, it copied across as clipper.bin. Now this is an old firmware, so I'm going to delete that for now. And what we're going to do is we're going to have to rename this to firmware.bin. So it's firmware.bin. Now what we'll do is we'll go over to the desktop for a second on the computer for the drive. We'll pop that out. We'll grab our SD reader and we'll paste or I'm sorry, place this in here. Then we'll place this back on the computer. We'll go back to the desktop and as you can see we can see the boot drive now right here. So what we have currently is the old firmware that loaded. If you want to preserve that you're going to have to rename it. So I'm going to rename this to temp firmware dot temp. If I ever want to reload it again, I'll rename it lowercase firmware dot bin. So we're done with that. So let's go to the downloads folder. We'll right click on firmware dot bin and we'll send it to the boot drive. So we'll confirm it's there. Then we'll go back over to the workbench. We'll pop out the drive. We'll place the drive inside of here. I'll connect it with power. Now it should be on the jumper for power. So we're good there. Right now it's on USB power. If you were to put it on the other two pins, it would be direct power. I'm going to connect the actual power. Now it'll light up and flash the firmware. One reminder, once you flash the firmware and use direct power from your PSU, you're gonna have to move the jumper over. But for now, we're just building out a solution so that you can see it on the bench. But what I also want to do right now is show you what we have to hook up just to test it on the bench. And that is we have to hook up our thermistors. So as I said earlier in this video, hopefully, there's actually a configuration that I want to show you real quick. And that is when we go to the browser, and we go over to the actual configuration, you can see that there's TB, there's the hot end for zero and hot end one. So this hot end needs to have a connection for a thermistor as well as the bed for a default configuration. And then we also have to hook up our end stops. So you can see it's five volts ground and then a signal pin for each one of these. So I'll walk you through that process real quick. So on the actual desktop that I have here, I'm going to take a thermistor and I'm going to plug in that port for the heat bed. Then I'm going to do the same for this thermistor for the hot end. That's our first hot end or hot end zero. Then I'm going to take an end stop and this is the switch end stop that where I negated the logic because it's got the opposite logic if we don't. And I'm going to place these wires in and the wires go as follows. It's voltage, ground, and signal in green. So that means that we're going to line it up here. We're going to plug it in and it's correct. Now we're going to do the same but with different end stops. And this end stop is just a regular switch end stop with no circuitry. So it's actually, in this case, the black is ground and the red is signal. So it's the bottom two pins in the row. 
So we'll connect that. And then we'll do it one more time for another end stop. So we've got this, and this is gonna be the Z axis. And note the pin above is empty because that's the voltage pin. So now that we have that set up, we'll reconnect the power. Then we'll go back over to the desktop on the computer. We'll go to the fluid configuration. And I know this is not gonna work initially, so I'm gonna try a restart clipper. It says not connected. It says printer is not ready. So the reason that is, is because we missed a setting being the USB. So to find that, we're gonna actually go back over to the Clipper website, and there's a command that I forgot, and that's down here. So we're gonna put this command in so we can edit our configuration with the correct setting. So I'll go to TerraTerm, I'll right click and paste the command, press enter, and here is our drive on the network, or excuse me, the serial connection that we see. So now that we have that, we actually have to edit the file. So I'm going to go over to Clipper for Fluid. I'm going to right click on the file. I'm going to do Edit. I'm going to scroll down to the MCU. And I'm going to paste our setting over that. Then I'm going to click Save. Then I'm going to Close. Now I'll try restart again. Now it's asking something different. It's saying that we don't have this, 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 and a cancel print macro. So we're gonna click on what it says here. And essentially it's saying add tags. So we're gonna copy this first. And we're going to go back over here, right click on this, edit, and at the very top, I'm going to add the first category. Then I'm going to go back over to the web page and grab the next thing, which is display status. I'm going to paste that in as well. And then I'm going to paste in the last thing right here, which is print pause resume or pause resume. So I'll copy that. Then I'll paste it here. And there's probably one more thing, so I'll click Save and Restart. We'll see what happens. There probably is gonna be an issue now when we click. So we've got the Cancel Print issue. So we need the macro for that. So we can go over to here. And down here, there's something about Cancel Print. So I believe this goes in your configuration file as well. So let's go back over here, right click on this, edit, and we'll paste that in as well. Then we'll click save and restart, and then we'll try and connect and see what happens. So it looks like something happened, so let's go to home. And it looks like we're now getting a readout for our actual heat bed. So what I'm going to actually do is grab one of these with my finger in just a second. But let's see if this actually works. So if I go over to the workbench, I grab one of the thermistors and I put my finger on it. The temperature should go up. So let's go back and check. So on the desktop you saw there was a spike in temperature while I was holding it. So we know that's working. So now we can actually check end stops as well. Now the functionality for it I think is hidden. So let's see if we can do it through the console. So over here you can type in commands like M119 and press enter. And as you see it says open, open, open. So let's Go back over to the workbench for a second. I'm going to hold this down throughout and go back over to the desktop. And I'm going to do the same command again of M119 enter. And you can see it's triggered. So if I let it go with my finger and try it again, 
It's M119 Enter. So that is the easiest way that I found to set up Clipper using Fluid Pi. So if you like my tutorial, please press the like button and subscribe. And for all of my patrons and PayPal friends, I have placed a thank you at the very end because I'm grateful. So everyone take care, be safe, and we'll catch up later.